So there's a lot of misnomers and just fake news about white patina. These four pieces here and several of these all came from my place in Gillespie County, Fredericksburg, Texas. Now one thing to keep in mind about authentic white patina, it should always be smooth to the touch and when you put it under water, the white should stay there. Now one of the big things that people will say is, is that this stuff is made by the sun bleaching out the surface of the material and blah blah blah. Now Yes, that's true to a point, but not true in the long term. So, only your caliche or base type soils are going to make this white patina. It has to do with the alkaline leaching out the color in the material. Now, if you'll notice, this side was down, so there's no white on it. That side's a little frosted. This piece was actually in the about three inches down in the pure lime looking caliche. That's not white material like Burlington. It's probably a type of root beer flint underneath there, but it has been completely leached out by the stuff. And you have a piece like this. And yes, during uh, in my early 20s, a drunk friend decided to help me out and glued with E6000, the rat tail knife back in the handle, but we won't talk about that or mention <clears throat> his name. But, so you have water permeating through the soil. It'll build up mineral on this face. All of these little white splotches and lines that you see have to do with corresponding to little mineral deposits that would look like what is still on this piece under those ears or like that little spot. So when it comes to making this white patina, you have the factors that I like to compare to cooking because people then will know what you're talking about. You have time, temperature, and mass. So on this case, we have the concentration of alkalinity in the soil, which is the higher a base that it is. The higher the base, the quicker it can happen, the less temperature that is needed to have happen. Pieces that are like this are usually found on top of the ground. This is root beer flint from Harper, Texas, and it just looks absolutely horrible because this was a surface find in a very high alkaline soil. So the temperature from the sun cooking it does make it get hotter because flint rocks in the sun when it's 100 degrees in the shade or probably 150, 160 degrees out there. So that does impact it. Basically, any white patina that is rough to the touch, disappears with water, is going to be fake. This is one of the easiest patinas to recognize once you learn and you start looking at materials. Like a piece like this, obvious white patina, you flip it over, you can see it rolled around the edge just a little bit here. Large pocket here with none, because while it's sitting in the soil this way, your water's coming down through it, collecting your mineral on top, which the lime, lye, it's all uh, sodium hydroxide based is going to be what actually is the caustic action. And yes, that's what's in drain cleaner. Yes, a bunch of you will hear about using drain cleaners for white patina. But I've only ever known one person that was successful doing a fake white patina. It was a real hit and miss. And he was doing it on pieces like these. These two are agatized coral from either Florida or Georgia and seeing like on this piece it's just like the white on ours you can see how it grew on one side and just rolled around a little bit on the other side so one of the biggest things anybody can do to try to prevent finding fake stuff and let's face it it's out there there's just no way of changing it but you need to learn your materials Second to none about any kind of point. I don't care if it's a bird point, a paleo, 
the first and foremost thing is is to learn your materials and learn your locations. Like this is obviously coral. Therefore, you are not going to find Central Texas points made out of this. You are not going to find dovetails made out of this. There are a few random pieces in the southeastern that do resemble points from other places, but the material is just going to be different. Uh, let's see. Both of these are some paleos. And the other thing is, is white patina is going to be very distinctive according to the material. Like this piece, you can't see it too well underneath there, but anybody who knows Central Texas knows that these lines and with this kind of stuff, that's actually root beer flint out of there. This only comes from a small spot up in the junction and Harper kind of areas and around. So outside of, I'd say, 100 miles of Central Texas, you won't have that particular piece. This is a very classic Edwards Plateau chert, blah, blah, blah. Uh, actually comes out of a layer in the limestone about two miles from where I'm sitting. And but anyways, I don't have any good examples to show you a fake white patina, but the biggest thing is it needs to be smooth to the touch. Put it in water and you'll see people lick pieces. Okay, well be careful about licking something that somebody might have put chemicals on because Sodium hydroxide is lye, which is drain cleaner, and so you don't want to put that in your mouth. But you can do the whole spit on the piece. Well, let's take this little bell point, and no, it's not a Castroville. I pulled it out of an Andyce camp. It's a bell point. So we're going to lick it. And you'll see now that it's shiny, but none of the white went away. And that's what you want to see. If you lick it and it leaves a completely clear spot, then you know it's no good. So, to sum up this rambling, like there is decent root beer, and that's what we call frosted white patina. So over time, water permeates the soil, makes these little tiny mineral deposits on here, and underneath that pressure that that mineral clinging to the surface makes, is able to leach it white over time. And so like this piece too, let's lick it. And all we got shiny and see the white actually is a little bit more pronounced instead of going away. And that is exactly what you want to see. So anywho, I decided to make several videos like this to try to help explain some things so I guess to sum it up you need to have a high base soil it needs to be with that lime and you also need to learn your materials about things your hornstone will actually get this kind of patina but it reacts a completely different way so, the best way to educate yourself is looking at broken pieces like these. Even take them and go hit it with a hammer and knock a chunk off the edge and see what a fresh chip looks like on it. We'll talk about black lights in a video. So, thanks for listening to my rambling.